What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car track SUV reviews on YouTube and today we are in the brand new 2022 Toyota Tundra courtesy of Younger Toyota in Hagerstown, Maryland. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so I am in this one today obviously because it has been completely redesigned for the 2022 model year and specifically we are in the limited trim here today so we will be going over completely everything about this limited trim you have a brand new 14 inch color touchscreen display a new twin turbo v6 power plant as well and so like i said we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all of that fun stuff so having said all that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so there will be several different configurations obviously with trucks that's the way it works for specifically even the limited trim level essentially for the limited it starts at forty six thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars for the four by two double cab with a six and a half foot bed going up to fifty two thousand two hundred and thirty dollars for the four by four crew max six and a half foot bed which is the one we have today and the price as tested that we are currently in with just about every single option you could possibly want on this thing fifty nine thousand nine hundred and eighty three dollars but like I said, regardless of the configuration that you go with, the power plant on this particular Tundra Limited is going to be the same. Powering the Beast is a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6, 389 horsepower at 5200 RPM, 479 pound feet of torque, coming in at 2400 RPM. Power sent to rear wheels or all wheels through a 10 speed automatic, zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 5.7 seconds, with MPG numbers coming in at 18 in the city, 23 in the highway for the rear wheel drive, 17 city, 22 then on the highway for the four-wheel drive but either way surprisingly Toyota recommends regular unleaded fuel so it's gonna save you a little bit of money there that's pretty cool I like that but so that before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in our Tundra I wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes so the drive mode circular dial is located directly behind the shift you essentially turn it to the left and the right to adjust the drive modes and so drive modes will include eco normal sport and there is also a tow and haul mode button for that one you just simply press the button but essentially adjusting things like the shift points and the throttle response and so now having gotten all of that out of the way what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's put the Tundra here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new Tundra here up to speed. All right, you guys. And so we did just switch it on over to sport mode. So we are ready to go in three, two, one. A little bit of a rolling start. There it is. Nice. Quick shifts. Nice sound. Wow. Heck of a lot quicker than I thought a truck of this size was going to be. That is plenty of an acceleration to merge you onto the highway. Really, that was very impressive. I know I was kind of hesitant because it's not a V8 anymore. It's a twin turbo V6, but I'm telling you guys, no turbo lag. And that was a, an extremely impressive acceleration, quite honestly, for, like I said, a truck of this size. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 13.9 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 13.6 inch ventilated rear discs. As far as that braking feel goes, yeah, it's fine. I mean, it brakes like a truck. There's a little bit of a softness to the braking feel, but still not gonna have any issues with coming to the stop in this beast. But then touching on suspension and handling, up front, you're gonna get an independent Debo wishbone type front suspension. In the back, coil spring multi-link rear suspension. Do wanna also mention there are some options when it comes to the suspension as well. There is a rear air suspension that goes for $650. There's also an off-road suspension with Bilstein shocks. It's gonna come with the Toyota off-road package or the TRD off-road package, my bad that goes for three thousand eighty five dollars and it's actually a couple of them but that was the cheapest one that i could find but overall as far as ride quality goes it actually rides a bit smoother than most trucks i typically review so i'm definitely a fan of that as far as steering feel goes it feels like it should it's definitely not a loose steering feel but it's not a heavy steering feel either i would say it's probably just right for what the tundra is so it should definitely get the job done in this thing as far as cabin noise goes i'm going 50 miles per hour right now i do have the air on there's a little bit of road noise, but really it's perfectly fine. So definitely no issues. Nothing that would bother me 
I'll just put it that way. And I should also mention there is an acoustic laminated front windshield that does come standard on the Tundra Limited. So that may be contributing to our serene cabin that we have in this one here today. And touching on visibility, I can see actually pretty darn good out the back. There is a massive rear window there. So overall visibility is perfectly fine for me as well, considering the size of this truck. I'll just put it that way. But anyways, that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 Toyota Tundra. All right, you guys. And so here she is, the new 2022 Toyota Tundra, completely redesigned for the 2022 model year. Let me tell you, this design is a heck of a lot better than what it used to be. Not that the old design was bad, but this thing looks dang good but let's go ahead and start up front on this one all black front grille specific to the limited trim level and of course each trim level is going to provide you with a slightly different look up front and different trim accents throughout really and you do have some satin chrome surround surrounding that front grille again specific to the limited trim level you guys can see there's some toyota lettering etched into the front portion of that rear bumper there as well and the cool thing is the fog lights are actually integrated into the front grille design which i thought was pretty cool but anyways i'm getting ahead of myself let's actually touch on the headlights here LED headlights do come standard. They come with LED daytime running lights as well. Automatic feature, of course, coming with that, meaning when it starts to get dark at night, those headlights will turn on automatically for you there. Manual leveling adjustment as well, along with automatic high beams, meaning if you have those high beams on and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams. And then when that vehicle is gone, it's going to automatically bump that back up to high beams. So it's just one less thing you got to worry about there. And again, LED fog lights coming standard as well, and they are placed within that front grille design as opposed to kind of underneath of the headlights which i thought was pretty cool so big fan of that but there also is some additional ventilation found just underneath of these headlights as well i don't know if you guys can see that or not but anyways overall a very very good looking front end but pretty much rounds out the front let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the tundra all right so now since we are around to the side of this one first thing i want to mention is there is a gloss black a pillar i think you guys can see that it looks pretty darn good in my personal opinion but you do have some chrome window surrounds a really chrome belt line molding i guess you could say because it doesn't continue up onto the top you do have some chrome limited badging on those rear doors i think you guys could see that as well got some chrome tundra badging on the front doors and chrome door handles also coming standard on our limited trim level that we have here today another thing is you have some gray painted over fenders i think you guys could see that just over the wheel wells there so not going to be body colored but toyota chose to accent them in gray i think that still looks good honestly as far as the side mirrors go they are black to match that gloss black a pillar they are heated auto dimming, power adjustable with integrated turn signals. They are power folding with the reverse tilt down feature then as well. So as far as function goes, pretty much have absolutely everything side mirrors can possibly have these days but take a look at the wheel configuration they are bi-color they are 20 inch machine finished aluminum alloys and they look dang good as well but pretty much rounds out the side profile of this one let's now go ahead and make our way to the back of the tundra all right and so now since we are around to the back of this one you do have the body colored tailgate spoiler kind of integrated into that rear tailgate there so looks pretty good chrome handle on the back of that as well to tie in with all the other chrome accents including that 4x4 badging as well tundra lettering spelled out horizontally of course on that rear tailgate led taillights actually come standard so i do like that you have the extra illumination there because not all trucks will give you those led taillights of course led center high mount stop lamp to go along with that and you do have some satin chrome accenting on that rear bumper as well and since we're back here let's go ahead and touch on the towing numbers you guys can see the connectors just to the left of the license plate there but as far as towing capacity goes it is going to range whether or not you go with the crew cab or the double cab whether or not you go with a five and a half foot or six and a half foot bed but ultimately the max towing capacity specific to the limited trim that we have today comes in 11,400 pounds which is definitely a good bit but just below it all you will find a single exhaust outlet tucked away on the driver's side underneath there and there is a TRD exhaust available but having said that I do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip <laughs> All 
right, so now since we are around to the back of the Tundra, when it comes to opening the rear tailgate, there's actually a button on the key fob. There is a button, that chrome handle, of course, on the tailgate itself, but the coolest way to open that tailgate, there's actually a tailgate release bump switch in the driver's side rear tail light. So that is the kind of 007 way, and essentially they put it there so you can easily hop up onto the back if you wanted to. So just another placement where you can actually open that thing up. But once opened up, like I've been saying previously, there is either a five and a half foot or six and a half foot bed available. We do have the six and a half foot currently with our crew cab here today. So that really, this is a beast of a truck that we're in. Payload capacity comes in at 1,740 pounds max. There is a deck rail system with four adjustable tie down cleats. It's always nice. Aluminum reinforced composite bed construction as well. Integrated cargo lighting as expected. And it's all LED cargo lighting as well, by the way. So that is definitely pretty cool. So overall, it's got everything you could possibly need really in the bed of the truck. But then making our way up to the rear leg room is going to differ depending upon which cab size you go with of course double cab is going to give you 33.3 inches of rear leg room that's not obviously the one we have today we do have the crew cab coming in at 41.6 inches so for reference i'm an even six feet tall this is how much space i have back there there are however 60 40 flip up bench seats meaning those rear seats can fold up in typical truck fashion i guess you could say and underneath of those seats you can actually find some rear under seat storage which is pretty cool i definitely was a fan of that and you find that a lot with pickup trucks so always a fan like i said rear ventilation is actually going to come with the crew max only you're not going to get that rear ventilation with the double cab you do have some rear charging ports back there you not only have a 120 volt power outlet but you also have a usb charging port and a standard phone charging port back there as well but also rear center armrest with cup holders back there too i don't think i mentioned that yet but rear seats were plenty comfortable certainly a ton of leg room at least here in our crew cab but then making our way up to the front seats soft tex upholstery is going to be standard on the limited this front seats will be eight-way power adjustable for both the driver and the passenger which is pretty cool with two-way power lumbar as well memory settings do come standard for the driver for up to two different drivers actually and you will actually get heated and ventilated front seats that come standard on the limited those buttons are located just below the infotainment screen but overall seats were actually plenty comfortable so definitely don't see any issues with taking this thing on a long road trip or on the beach or whatever the case so that is definitely nice let's take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped and you can actually get a heated steering wheel like we have today for an additional $150, which isn't all that bad for that. Then make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key, although it is still in the plastic here, but essentially all of your buttons are located on one side of the key. Along with that Toyota logo, you got lock, unlock, and the button to pop the rear tailgate, but it is all keyless entry with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my front of the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee. And so once started up, Gauge cluster is going to be a standard analog cluster with a 4.2 inch center display with the limited. However, I will say with upper trim levels, you can get a full 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster, but with the limited, you can't. So that is currently what you're looking at right now. But I will say there are steering wheel mounted controls found on the left side of the steering wheel if you wanted to adjust what is on that center digital portion, giving you things like your outside temperature, how many miles you have left until you hit empty. There is a digital speedometer, of course, when you need your next oil change and different drive driving statistics, the list goes on. So it pretty much does have everything you could possibly want in the digital portion there. Then making our way to overall interior quality, a panoramic roof will go for $1,350. If you wanted that option, we do have that option, of course. So that's letting in a heck of a lot more light for this video, so I am appreciative. LED interior lighting coming standard. There is an overhead sunglass holder as well, found on the ceiling of this one here. Auto dimming rear view mirror with home link controls for up to three different garage doors. You gotta love that. And it's also kind of a frameless design too which is pretty cool dual zoom climate control coming standard there is a leather wrap shift knob as well wireless phone charger is going to be available we do have that option as well i've been taking advantage of that so that has been charging my phone this entire time i've been filming which is always nice as far as overall interior quality goes it's pretty direct and to the point here i do like the little ledges found on uh, just below all four windows in this thing a nice little place to rest your arm that i don't typically see which is pretty cool you got your grab handles of course to get in and out of both the front and back seat so typical truck fashion there as well kind of have this carbon fiber look although it's plastic found just above the passenger side glove box there got tons of little places for storage there's an electromechanical parking brake dual cup holders and within the center armrest you have a ton of storage along with the usb charging port and a phone charging port it looks like in there as well so it's a very practical and functional interior i guess i could put it that way but now let's go ahead and make our way to the tech here because 
This infotainment screen is massive. For the limited trim level, you get a 14 inch color touchscreen display and it is a beast to go along with the size of this truck, I guess. Bluetooth and audio streaming do come standard wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, you gotta love that. So many vehicles these days are still having you connect it via USB cable, so the wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, that is a big deal, at least to me. You can check out different driving statistics up on that massive screen if you wanted to as well. Of course, can check out your radio information, and by the way, when it comes to the sound systems on the Tundra, nine speakers is going to be the standard configuration, but there is an optional 12 speaker JBL sound system that goes for $565. That is actually going to come with a subwoofer and an external amp as well and that is the sound system that we have here today so what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one actually that was really really good that was a really good sound system you guys the bass was absolutely ridiculous and come to think of it my first car it had a jbl subwoofer in it so i know the bass is excellent with jbl and it is and it's an extremely reliable sound system as well we got a very good name behind them i'll say that so really that sound system that jbl sound system is plenty for the tundra without a doubt but anyways last thing i want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put this thing in reverse, you of course will find a rear view camera coming stated across the board. There is also an optional panoramic view monitor. We have that, you guys can see that screen to the right as well, but as always that, it's going to lead us into safety. And so to start, front side, side curtain airbags do come standard, but there are also driver and passenger knee airbags as well. You don't always get that. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers to children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but actually Toyota does a really good job with standard safety on the Tundra as well. You of course get Toyota Safety Sense 2.5. That comes standard on the Limited. That gives you a pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, dynamic radar, cruise control, lane departure alert with steering assist, assist, lane tracing assist, automatic high beams, and road sign assist as well. But not only that, there's still more standard safety that comes with the Limited, including a blind spot monitoring system with the rear cross traffic alert and front and rear parking sensors with automatic braking then as well. And so overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Tundra Limited, the twin turbo V6 is plenty powerful. And that's kind of one thing I was worried about when I first started driving this one. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, I want the V8. But Quite honestly, I've driven the V8 and now I've driven the twin turbo V6. This is plenty. This is plenty powerful. I'm telling you guys, you will not be able to tell the difference. It's a heck of an acceleration in this thing. But anyways, the tailgate release button and the rear tail light, that is pretty cool as well. I like that. 14 inch screen is absolutely massive. It's kind of reminiscent of Tesla, just horizontal rather than vertical, which is pretty cool. Excellent exterior styling, I will say that as well. And of course, Toyota's got that reputation of incredible reliability, which I would imagine this would go right along with that. And I know somebody's gonna say, oh, what about the twin turbo V6? Well, Lexus has been using that engine for quite a while now, so it's already proven itself. Anyways, that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you wanna see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay out.